video is intended to provide the caregiver with an overview of the operation of the LTV 1150 ventilator. It's not designed to replace the operator's manual. All users should read the LTV 1150 ventilator series operator's manual. To best meet your needs, this instructional video is divided into segments. Initially, it is best to watch the entire presentation in order. After that, you may want to view specific segments. LTV stands for Laptop Ventilator. The LTV is small and lightweight, like a laptop computer. It only weighs about 14 pounds, but packs a world of innovative features into its small size. If you have any questions, please see your operator's manual or contact your local sales representative. Welcome to our DVD training program for the LTV 1150 ventilator. This training program is intended to familiarize caregivers of patients on the LTV 1150 ventilator with the use of this life support device. The LTV offers both volume and pressure ventilation. Today we will be discussing the LTV 1150 in particular. Let's start by taking a look at the external features of the LTV 1150. On the rear of the ventilator there is a compartment where the internal battery is housed. You can also see the mounting bracket. This dovetail bracket slides into the corresponding bracket on either the table stand or the pole stand. You can also purchase just the dovetail bracket if you'd like to mount the ventilator on a wall, bed frame, or on the back of a wheelchair. On top there are two eyelets for attaching either the hand strap or the shoulder strap. On the left side of the ventilator is the inlet filter. It is important not to block this filter because this is where the ventilator draws in room air for the patient to breathe. Above the inlet filter is the oxygen port. The LTV 1150 is equipped with a low pressure oxygen inlet. Oxygen from the low pressure source is mixed with the air inside the ventilator. The oxygen percent delivered to the patient is determined by the oxygen inlet flow and the total minute volume and is not regulated by the ventilator. Next we find the communication port. This port allows downloading of information. The middle port is for attaching a patient assist call system, used in hospitals and other facilities. Above the middle port is the power port pigtail connector for connecting the power source, either electrical power, external battery power, or an automobile power adapter to power the LTV while in a car. Note that the release button on the power cord must be depressed when connecting or disconnecting the power cord from the ventilator. Above the ports is the fan. It is important not to block the fan. On the right side of the ventilator, we find the opening for the audible alarm. It is important not to block this opening since the alarm volume would be reduced. Under this, you will notice a slit-shaped opening that is part of the internal air circulating system. Do not block this area either. Next, you can see three small ports. These are for connecting the exhalation drive line and the two flow transducer sense lines on the patient circuit assembly. The exhalation drive line is connected to the bottom port that is closest to the back of the ventilator. Push this tube on firmly to ensure a tight fit. The two transducer sense lines are non-interchangeable lure lock style fittings. To attach the sense lines to the ventilator, stand in front of the ventilator with one of the sense lines between your thumb and forefinger. Now give the sense line a turn counterclockwise. Insert the lure lock into the port and release, allowing the lure lock to turn clockwise. Then give the lure lock a turn clockwise to tighten. These sense lines measure airflow at the patient Y. To complete attachment of the patient circuit to the ventilator, Connect the end of the circuit to the 22 mm outlet port on the bottom of the right hand side using the adapter. Slide on snugly. Please remember it is important to orient the sense lines on the patient circuit facing up while the ventilator is operating. Keeping the sense lines facing up will help keep them free from fluid and debris. CareFusion offers a wide variety of disposable and reusable patient circuits and circuit components. Your home medical equipment supplier and clinician will assist you with circuit selection and ordering.
A ventilator checkout test is available and should be performed at setup and before connection to the patient. For the procedure for the ventilator checkout test, please refer to the operator's manual. Every time the ventilator is turned on, the ventilator will perform a post or power on self-test. The post is a set of self-tests the ventilator performs when turned on to verify the operational integrity of the ventilator. If a ventilator checkout test is not going to be performed, the following steps will be used to turn on the LTV-1150. To start the LTV-1150, push the on standby button once. The ventilator will perform a post. If the patient query feature is on, you will notice that the ventilator will display same patient. If the LTV-1150 will be placed on the same patient, press the select button next to the display window and ventilation will begin with the settings in use during the last power cycle. If a new patient will be placed on the ventilator, turn the set value knob until new patient is displayed in the window. Now push the select button next to the display window. Infant will be displayed in the display window. Turn the set value knob until the desired patient type is displayed in the window. Once the desired patient type is displayed in the window, push the select button and ventilation will begin at the preset value for that patient type. If the patient query has been turned off, push the on standby button once and the LTV-1150 ventilator will perform the post. Once that is complete, ventilation will begin with the settings in use during the last power cycle. The LTV provides a wide variety of information. Monitor data is shown in the display window and is actively updated whenever alarms and extended features are not displayed. The LTV scrolls through the monitor data automatically, displaying each value for three seconds. To stop the display from scrolling, simply press the select button next to the display window one time. To move on to the next display, press the select button again. This segment talks about the controls that you may have to use when caring for a patient on the LTV-1150 ventilator. Let's take a look at the LTV ventilator front panel. The control displays on the LTV-1150 can be either bright or dim. The control display is bright when it is active or when selected for change. A control display is dim when another control is selected for changing and when it is not active in the current mode. For example, when pressure ventilation is selected, the volume control display is dim. The display can also be blank. The displays may all go blank when operating on the internal battery in order to conserve power. You can turn the display back on by pressing any button or by turning the set value knob. The LTV control displays may flash or remain constantly visible. When a control flashes, it means one of the following. If you are changing a control setting and the display flashes, you have reached a limited value for the control. For example, you are trying to set a tidal volume larger than the inspiratory flow allows. If an alarm display flashes, it indicates that an alarm has occurred or is active. If a control display flashes, other than when you are trying to make a change, it indicates a special condition, such as a flow terminated pressure control breath. If the control lock LED flashes, it indicates that someone tried to change the control settings while the front panel controls were locked. The LTV's front panel is very easy to use. We'll start with the lower left-hand corner of the LTV control panel and work our way across and then up. This is the on standby button. When the ventilator is in standby, with external power provided, the on standby LED will be off, but the internal battery will be charging. Push the button once to turn the ventilator on. The on standby LED will light up. 
The ventilator will operate on external battery power if it is available, otherwise it will use the internal battery. The battery will be charged while the LTV is on and connected to external power. To turn the ventilator off or standby, press and hold the on standby button for three seconds. To make sure that the caregiver is aware that the ventilator was turned off or is in standby mode, an in-op audible alarm will occur each time the ventilator is turned off. To cancel the in-op audible alarm, press and release the silence button. The ventilator in-op light will be illuminated for 10 to 15 minutes after turning off the ventilator. This lets the caregiver know that the ventilator was turned off within the past few minutes. This is the manual breath button. Pressing this button will deliver one manual breath. The next button is the control lock. Pushing this button will lock the front panel controls so the settings are not accidentally changed. To unlock the control panel, it is either a one button push or a three second hold. One of the two different levels of difficulty can be set for control unlocking. Easy or a one button push or hard for a three second hold. The setting for easy or hard on lock can be changed by a qualified clinician. Now we come to the set value knob, which is used to change the control settings, and also to navigate the extended features. Turning the knob clockwise increases the values. Counterclockwise decreases the values. The last button in the bottom row is the peep control. To change the peep value, push the peep control button and change the setting using the set value knob. The final group of controls are for the alarm functions of the LTV1150. They are located above the set value knob. The high pressure limit is to establish the maximum pressure permitted to the patient circuit. If the pressure meets a high pressure setting, the alarm will be displayed, an audible alarm will sound, and the turbine is stopped to allow the circuit pressure to evacuate. Please note, a qualified clinician can set an audible delay. However, the visual alarm will be displayed with every high pressure alarm. The alarm can be set from 5 to 100 centimeters of water pressure. The low pressure alarm establishes the minimum expected circuit pressure for the selected breath types. If the pressure does not meet or exceed the low pressure setting, a visual and audible alarm will sound. The low pressure alarm control can be set to 1 to 60 centimeters of water pressure, or it can be turned off. It is important to know that the use of accessories, such as speaking valves, heat moisture exchangers, and filters create additional patient circuit resistance. In the event of a disconnection, this may impede the generation of a low pressure alarm. Ensure that the low pressure alarm settings accommodate these types of accessories when used in combination with patient circuits. The low minute volume alarm sets the minimum expected exhaled minute volume. The low minute volume alarm control can be set from 0.1 to 99 liters per minute, or it can be turned off. Another very important point is that the low minute volume control settings should be set to their highest clinically appropriate value. If there is a clinical need to set the low minute volume alarm to lower values or off, perform a clinical assessment to determine if an alternative monitor, such as a pulse oximeter with an audible alarm, or a cardiorespiratory monitor should be used. The alarm silence reset button is used to silence alarm for 60 seconds, to reset an alarm, and to start a 60 second preemptive silence period. The LTV generates an alarm when it detects a condition that requires immediate attention. Some alarms can reset themselves, for instance a high pressure alarm that is caused by a cough. Other alarms require some action from the operator, so the audio and visual alarms will continue until the problem is corrected. 
When an alarm occurs, an alarm message is flashed in the display window. An audible alarm is sounded. This means the alarm is active or is occurring now. When an alarm condition clears itself, or it is no longer in an active state, the audible alarm is silenced. For example, if the patient coughs once and sounds the high pressure alarm, then on the next breath no alarm condition exists. The visual alarm message continues to flash in the display window, but there is no longer an audible alarm. As with any alarm active or cleared, the patient must be assessed and the alarm message cleared by pressing the alarm silence reset button. Do not operate the ventilator without setting the adjustable alarms. All adjustable alarms must be set to ensure safe operation. Do not leave the patient unattended without checking to make sure all critical alarms, such as low pressure alarms, have been set. Of course, all patients on life support ventilation should have a resuscitation bag on hand for emergency use. Now we'll take a look at the equipment alarms. The battery low alarm occurs when the ventilator is operating on internal battery power and the battery charge level drops below the low threshold. When a battery low alarm occurs, the battery level LED is yellow. The battery low message is displayed and the audible alarm is sounded. To reset the battery low alarm, press the silence reset button twice. When the battery reaches the low level, the ventilator will run for approximately 10 minutes on nominal settings. The actual run time may be more or less depending on ventilator settings, patient demand, and battery age. The battery empty alarm occurs when the ventilator is operating from internal battery power and the battery charge level drops below the empty threshold. For patient safety, this alarm can only be silenced once for 30 seconds and cannot be silenced preemptively. After the 30 seconds has elapsed, the alarm cannot be silenced again and will continue to sound and display until an alternate power source is provided or the battery is depleted and the ventilator in-op alarm will occur. When a battery empty alarm occurs, the battery level LED is red. The battery empty message is displayed and the audible alarm is sounded. When the battery reaches the empty level, the ventilator will run for approximately five minutes at nominal settings. To temporarily silence the battery empty alarm, press the silence reset button. The power low alarm occurs when the ventilator is operating on external battery power and the voltage drops to the low level. When a power low alarm occurs, the power low message is flashed in the display window. The external power LED is displayed yellow. The audible alarm is sounded. To reset the power low alarm, press the silence reset button twice. The power lost alarm occurs when the ventilator is operating on external power and switches to the internal battery. The change to internal battery is made when the external power voltage drops below the usable level. There is no interruption in ventilation. When a power lost alarm occurs, the power lost message is flashed in the display window. The external power and charge status LEDs are turned off. The battery level LED is lit, showing the internal battery charge level. The ventilator begins operating from the internal battery. The audible alarm is sounded. After 60 seconds, the displays are turned off to conserve battery power. To reset the power lost alarm, press the silence reset button twice. The ventilator inoperative alarm occurs when the ventilator is switched from on to standby or the ventilator detects any condition that is deemed to make the ventilator unsafe. When an in-op alarm occurs, the ventilator shuts down and sets the hardware to a safe state so the patient can breathe room air. Inspiratory flow is stopped and the exhalation valve is opened, allowing the patient to breathe spontaneously from room air. The oxygen blending solenoids are closed. The in-op LED is illuminated red. The audible alarm is sounded continuously. To silence the in-op alarm, press the silence reset button. An in-op alarm is also generated as part of the normal process of switching the ventilator off and does not indicate a problem at that time. The in-op LED will remain lit for approximately five minutes and does not affect battery life. 
The locked message is displayed when a button is pressed while the controls are locked. No audible alarm is given. When a locked message is displayed, the locked message is flashed in the display window for 5 seconds or until the controls are unlocked. To unlock the controls when Easy Unlock is selected, simply press and release the control lock button. To unlock the controls when Hard Unlock is selected, press and hold the control lock button for 3 seconds. The remove patient alarm occurs when the ventilator is powered up in the ventilator checkout or ventilator maintenance modes. This is to remind you to remove the patient from the ventilator before proceeding since the ventilator does not deliver gas during these tests. To reset the remove patient alarm, press the alarm silence button twice. The LTV is designed to run on external AC power source, an external battery, an external DC power source, or its internal battery. When the ventilator is connected to an external power source, the ventilator's internal battery is continuously charged. The charge status LED is illuminated green when the internal battery is completely charged. If the charge status LED is red or flashing yellow for more than one hour, or does not show a complete charge after 24 hours, the battery is defective and should be replaced. To run the ventilator from the AC power adapter, connect the power connector from the AC adapter to the power port pigtail connector on the left side of the ventilator. Connect the proper AC power cable, either a 110 or 220 volt plug, into the AC power adapter. Connect the 110 or 220 volt power cable to a suitable power source. Verify that the external power LED shows green or amber. Several external battery options are available from Pulmonetic Systems. Each battery system has its own requirements, so be sure to read those instructions carefully before using the external battery with the LTV. The cables for LTV compatible external battery systems are pre-wired and properly terminated to ensure safe connection to the LTV series ventilators. To run the ventilator from an external battery, connect the power connector on the battery cable to the power port pigtail connector on the left side of the ventilator. To avoid damaging the ventilator or the power connector, push the release button on the connector before removing it from the ventilator power port pigtail connector. Verify that the external power LED shows green or amber. While the ventilator is connected to the external battery, the internal battery is being continuously charged. Please note, some external battery packs must be recharged only with a CareFusion external battery charger. The external battery must be disconnected from the LTV to connect to an external battery charger. An optional automobile power adapter is available to power the LTV 1150 ventilator while in a vehicle. This adapter is designed to connect to pre-wired positive 12 volt automobile cigarette lighter or auxiliary power outlets capable of supplying at least 20 amps of current. Please read the automobile power adapter instructions for use before using the LTV ventilator. The ventilator must not be powered by the automobile power adapter when starting or jump starting the auto. This could seriously damage the ventilator. In some automobiles, the power outlet only operates when the vehicle is running. When operating on the automobile power adapter with the vehicle turned off, verify which power source the ventilator is using by checking the external power and battery level LEDs on the ventilator. If the external power status LED shows green or amber, the ventilator is operating from the automobile power adapter. If the external power LED is off and the battery level LED is lit, the ventilator is operating from its internal battery. After starting the vehicle, connect the automobile lighter adapter to the cigarette lighter or power outlet on the vehicle. Verify the LED on the adapter shows green. Connect the power connector of the adapter to the power port pigtail connector on the left side of the ventilator. 
Verify the external power LED shows green or amber and the charge status LED is lit. Please read all instruction and notes of caution before using any battery source or the automobile cigarette lighter adapter. Before cleaning the ventilator or patient circuit, wash your hands with soap and warm water. Always follow universal precautions. Clean all external surfaces of the ventilator prior to initial use and after each patient use and whenever necessary. To clean the ventilator, wipe the exterior surfaces with a clean damp cloth with an appropriate bactericidal or germicidal agent. Follow the cleaning agent manufacturer's recommendations regarding contact time. The inlet filter is located on the lower left hand side of the LTV1150. Remove the inlet filter by gently pinching the foam filter and pulling it out. Hand wash the filter using warm water and a mild liquid detergent. Rinse with warm water. Inspect the filter and replace it with a new filter if necessary. Allow the filter to air dry before reinstalling it. Do not install a wet or damp filter into the ventilator. This could damage the ventilator. Very carefully, use a small screwdriver to remove the fan filter grill from its housing. Remove the fan filter by gently pinching it with your fingers, then pull it out. If you touch the fan blade while removing the fan filter grill or filter, a hardware fault will occur. This is normal. Clear the hardware fault alarm by using the silence reset button. Hand wash the filter using warm water and a mild liquid detergent. Rinse the filter thoroughly in warm water to remove all detergent. Inspect the filter for damage and replace if necessary. Allow the filter to air dry before reinstalling it. Reinstall the filter and snap the fan filter grill into place. Do not install a wet or damp filter into the ventilator. This could damage the ventilator. This concludes the LTV training video. Thank you for watching.